it's your boy Crypto Blood, and welcome to another episode of My Two Satoshis. It is May 1st, 2019. Boy, if they made rock like this today, I would definitely be a rock fan. <laughs> Paul out in Vegas. He wanted me to play Survivor Eye of the Tiger. This is a classic, people. I'm telling you, here in the Motor City, the Pistons always play this. This is like their theme song. When they would come out of the locker rooms, man, this song is crazy. Love this song, man. Thank you, Paul, out in Vegas for that song request for today. And I hope you guys are doing well on this first of the month, May 1st, 2019. Welcome to another episode of My Two Satoshis. Today, ladies and gents, we are going to look at how the crypto community is reacting to the Tether news of them being backed about 75% of their reserves. That's how much they are backed by. I think actually the cryptocurrency markets are taking it very well in, in all actuality. And I've actually got a post from uh, Max Kaiser on Twitter regarding this, that Tether's reserves backed only 75% of what was floating out in the markets. It actually shocked me um, a little bit there. I didn't really know how much, but 75 is is uh, better than what I thought. I'm going to be honest with you. So we're going to take a look at this article out of News BTC and take a look at Max Kaiser's tweet about it because it was it was spot on. Second article will be about this is crazy. Now, I never advocated paying taxes in Bitcoin or cryptos, but definitely getting a refund in Bitcoin is a good play to me. So we're going to take a look at uh, this article, evidently, now taxpayers can get their refunds in Bitcoin. We'll take a look at the details on that. And then the quick pick of the day is an unfortunate one. And I have to give a shout out to my guy, LaMarco Sal, out there on Twitter. He actually brought this to my attention on Sunday. This was about, about four days ago. And I, I just never... I retweeted it, but I never got a chance to cover it on the channel. So uh, we're going to take a look at this. This this definitely shocked me, guys. Longtime fan of Bart Shilton. Ever since, I should say, he's been on RT. Prior to that, I didn't really like the guy. You know, he would always come on uh, CNBC with that blonde hair. And when he was actually the uh, commissioner of the CFTC, he would sit up there and say, yeah, there's no manipulation of silver in the COMAX markets. I'm like, come on, man. But at any rate, he finally yeah. left the uh, CFTC chairman or commissioner position. And I think he just kind of floated around for a while. But then he ended up over at RT. And, I, you know, I like RT, man. They, they do a pretty good job at covering news in the most unbiased way I've seen on any of the mainstream media outlets but it, when he got over there you know i, I really liked him and uh he was uh, a, a strong crypto advocate so we'll take a quick look at that article as well but first let's take a look at that heat map from coin 360 today bitcoin is up about one percent it was up a little bit more than that uh just last hour actually it got slammed down a little bit but we did see a pop in bitcoin ethereum eos litecoin all up over uh, one and a half percent to one percent. A big gainer is Bitcoin Cash, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, Bitcoin Cash is up because Kraken actually delisted Bitcoin SV, so there was a boost <laughs> of buying on uh, Kraken for Bitcoin Cash. Don't know why, but uh, of the two, I definitely like Bitcoin Cash for sure better than SV. So there you have it for the heat map. We are currently at uh, as far as market cap at 175 billion dollars um, so we're making newer highs off of those lows at least not new highs but higher highs than previously so let's take a look at this Bart Shilton article former CFTC regulator crypto hodler and ICO endorser man this this took me by surprise people man it's out of nowhere you know I didn't I didn't know he was sick I don't think anyone did. It says here that last week, the former commissioner of the United States Commodities Futures Trading Commission 
an early advocate of cryptocurrency regulation, died at the age of 58, guys. Apart from his work for the regulator, he was best known for a host of America's financial news show, Boom Bust, in which he often covered cryptocurrency news. I liked when he came on. I did not like the, the, the two women prior to him. And then there was, a, there was another guy, I think, that hosted Boom Bust for a while as well. Uh, he was okay, but I didn't like those two women. The news channel broke the news about Bart's death on April 27th via a Twitter post. Later, CNBC wrote that Chilton died because of complications from pancreatic cancer, citing a family member. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So, just wanted to give you guys that info. Uh, man, he, he'll definitely be missed. Glad to see a former regulator become a crypto advocate. That's That's always... A warm feeling in my heart so hey there you have it guys first article though is out of news btc and it is about tether uh basically being forced by the information that was put out by the new york state attorney general office for not disclosing to their stakeholders about this shortfall of 700 and something million dollars well they were kind of forced to come out and uh show their hand and so their hand is that they were only 75% backed by the outstanding USDT tokens that are floating out there in the markets. So let's look at this article. According to the company behind the stablecoin USDT, it is not fully backed by fiat currency deposits. It was revealed today that the controversial coin asset firm Tether only holds a roughly 74% of the total value of USDTs currently circulating in supply. Tether and the cryptocurrency exchange Bifinex are currently defending allegations from the New York Attorney General's office that the latter borrowed $600 million from Tether to stay afloat after the trading venue reportedly lost $850 million. The dramatic shortcomings are thought to be the result of Crypto Capital, a Panama-based payments processor that Bitfinex used, having assets frozen in various nations around the world. It says here that an affidavit filed by the general counsel at both Tether and Bitfinex has today claimed that the stablecoin crypto asset USDT is only backed by around $2.1 billion. This falls short of the $2.8 billion worth of USDT currently in circulation, the document states. He also details that the credit agreement between Tether and Bitfinex did indeed exist and was in place for the protection of the virtual currency market. According to the memorandum by Tether's defense lawyer, there is no need for each USD token to even be backed by a dollar. According to the attorney general, the line of credit needed to be frozen because it improperly impairs the reserves Tether would use for redemption. The attorney general office appears to believe that Tether must hold $1 in cash fiat for every dollar of Tether these allegations are wrong on multiple levels. The affidavit seems to support this by highlighting that the stance of the company had officially changed with regards to the 100% backing of USDT in recent months. Given that this was widely reported at the time, it seems a wonder, firstly, that anyone was even continuing to use USDT when numerous other stablecoins now exist, and secondly, why the news of the New York Attorney General's Office allegations against the two companies should drop the price in the way it did last week. CEO of social trading platform eToro said that he mused on the likelihood of a potential Bitcoin price pump if the news causes people to exit USDT in mass. Ultimately, however, he admits that the shady goings on between Tether and Bitfinex will be negative for crypto, although he is sparse on specific details. And that's what he had to say about it. Meanwhile, independent crypto researcher and analysts seem to hint that the debacle would inevitably invite greater regulatory scrutiny to exchanges, which could in turn damage the utility of Bitcoin and other. No, it's not going to damage the, the utility of Bitcoin. That's for sure. We're not we're not uh, reliant on exchanges here for Bitcoin to flourish. I think you got that wrong, brother. Cardano and founder and co-founder of Ethereum, Charles Hoskins, used the news to draw attention to the fact that banks routinely operate on far lower reserves than those admitted by Tether today. This sentiment was echoed by RT's Max Kaiser and many others. Yeah, and that's what that's the post that I was going to show you guys. 
<laughs> that Max said Tether is 75% backed, Fed is 1% backed, JP Morgan is negative 20% unbacked. That is the truth. Ultimately, such a comparison is largely redundant. However, as any form of fractional reserve back in USDT is the antithesis of what many people in crypto signed up for when they got involved with the industry. An analyst from the block stated that comparisons between the percentage reserves held by Tether and those of average bank ultimately ignore the shady goings on of the crypto exchange Bitfinex. He went on to state that both companies are guilty of pathological lies. And he goes on to say, so it's all of a sudden fine that Tether only has 74% of its cash on hand because banks are even worse. And it's fine that Tether as well as Bifinex pathologically lie about anything they can get away with. So what do you guys think, man? Uh, you know, like I said, I personally thought it may have been a little bit less than 74%. To be honest with you. Uh, this guy, Larry Cermak, have you seen any exchanges out there publicly let you know what their reserves are and what they're fully backed by? No, you haven't. So for for Tether to come out, Bifinex to come out and say they're 74%, I don't give them credit for it because they were kind of forced to do that. But at the end of the day, that is a hell of a lot better than a bank. That is a hell of a lot better than the Federal Reserve. I want to see what these crypto exchanges are, are looking like uh, as far as reserves because I'm I'm under, my gut feeling is, is to say it's less than 74%. I'm just going to be honest with you. What do you guys think? Do you think these crypto exchanges have at least 74% or more? Or do you think they have less than 74% reserves? on standby at least with at least with blockchain it, it, it forces them to have a lot more uh checks and balances and, and it makes them a lot more accountable because if they could get away with more they probably would i'm just going to be honest with you at least blockchain does hold them somewhat more accountable as you can see they're at 74 percent um better than 50 20 1 percent or like max kaiser says negative 20 for JP Morgan. So what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts. I thought that was an interesting article and uh it, it just highlights that hell if Tether is at 74%, what are these crypto exchanges at? And you don't have to be, I'm going to be honest with you, the reason why I thought it may have been less is because you guys have to understand how these these financial systems work. They could run on 50% Honestly, they could run on even less than that because not everyone is going to leave out and redeem uh, Tether for actual U.S. dollars. If the system is going to continue to run, that will never happen uh, in, a, in a normal system. Now, if that happens, then there's something systematically wrong in cryptos altogether. Tether going down is just one one problem that's you know what i mean like i, I what i actually thought it would be less i'm gonna be honest with you i thought maybe 50 percent. but anyway next article guys is out of coindesk and it is about u.s taxpayers now being able to get their refunds in bitcoin it says income taxpayers in the u.s now have the option to receive their federal reserve and state refunds in bitcoin blockchain payment processor bitpay announced the news on tuesday saying that the firm has partnered with the U.S.-based taxation service provider Refundo for the service. Refundo customers can choose to receive all or a portion of their tax refund in Bitcoin using its CoinRT product. Taxpayers will have to set up an account to get a unique routing and banking number to input on their tax return, according to the announcement. They will also have to provide necessary background information for know your customer rules as well as bitcoin wallet addresses once the internal revenue service or state has deposited their refund bitpay will process the payment and send bitcoin to taxpayers wallets the service is touted as primarily focusing on servicing the underbank community with faster payments and lower transaction fees the ceo of refundo says adding bitcoin was a natural fit for our customers who often do not have traditional checking accounts pay high check cashing fees and regularly send money internationally rt enables them to get their bitcoin quickly easily for one flat fee now here this is this is how you really implement bitcoin 
in a in a useful way not just a pr stunt this is a good this is a good example guys and i hope you understand what i mean by that this is not some hotel saying they're going to start accepting it or flight traveling website saying they're accepting bitcoin now this is a pretty good one here refundos website says the coin rt service costs 34 dollars regardless of the refund amount while BitPay normally charges 1% for its payout services. Wow, there you have it, people. Very good news. Again, I'm an advocate of definitely receiving Bitcoin for a refund, but paying, no. Would you pay your taxes in gold? No, you wouldn't. So you don't want to pay your taxes in Bitcoin either. That's pretty much it for today. I'm going to go give me some chapsticks. My ashy lips are over here struggling. <laughs> well, that's it for today, ladies and gents. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. Man, Paul in Vegas. Good one here, brother. Good one. Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. It's your boy Crypto Blood, and that's my two Satoshis for May 1st, 2019. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. And I'm out of here, people. Holla!